what a great discussion. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you, Johannes. But now it's time to come to the first of our innovation disciplines, ideation. And when I'm thinking about ideation, creativity cannot be missing. So who would be a better person to ask about creativity than Tobias Eismann? Tobias is senior strategist and an expert when it comes to creativity. He also completed his PhD in the field of creativity for innovation management. Tobias, we're very excited to welcome you on stage today. So let's clear the stage for creativity. Hi, I'm Toby, and thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation. And I have a good news for you. So I'm the last one between you and the delicious lunch break, actually. So that's good. And I will talk about creativity today. But I think it's not just talking, but it's about experiencing creativity. So therefore, I would like to invite you to take out a paper and a pen. You should be equipped with that in your goodie bag. So check that, please, and get out a paper and a pen, also for those um, on the live stream. i give you a few seconds. You can also do it on a tablet, of course, if you have a pen. So you have a little task to really warm up the session and be creative together. So you have to look for someone in the group and, and pair up. And your task is to draw this person on the paper in front of you. There's just one limitation. You're not allowed to look at the paper. You're only allowed to look at the face of the person. So you do the, that basically blind in front of you on the paper. OK? So take a few seconds and try to be creative. And no cheating. Don't look on the paper or at the paper. You're drawing me? And for those at home, you can kind of imagine someone in your brain, if you're a friend or someone, if you don't have someone in your room. <laughs> All right, I think that's enough of a time. Of course, now you can have a look at your masterpiece. So how does the result look like? Everybody's laughing. Beautiful. Abstract art, I guess. So, ladies and gentlemen, obviously a lot of fun. So. I love this, this exercise, and I always do that with managers and people around in Siemens where, where I talk about creativity because of three things, actually. First of all, as you probably noticed, it's a lot of fun, right? We laugh together, especially during COVID time, it was a good starting point to create a feeling of togetherness because laughing together creates this togetherness. But there are also two big and important learnings concerning creativity, actually. So you actually, first of all, probably notice this first inner resistance to start drawing when I ask you to do so, probably, because you're not experienced to do that. You do it the very first time. And that's actually what always happens when you try to be creative. You have to do something the very first time, and it feels uncomfortable. But you have to overcome that. And second, you also, no matter how ridiculous this picture, right, or your idea may sound or look like, you have to show it to someone. You have to speak it out loud. That's so important, because very important, and very, very often, actually, our um, creativity ends up in our own brain. Because we have a thought, and we judge. And we think, ah, it's stupid. Uwe will laugh at me when I tell him, right? Because it's not doable. But that's, that doesn't matter. You, never, you can never imagine what will create or what will be created out of your thought in the brain or mind of someone else. So speak it out loud and say it out loud. That's very important. So keep those two learnings in mind. And a few sentences about myself. So why am I here? I'm, I will talk about creativity. I'm Toby, actually. I was stumbling over creativity during my life after my master's. I stumbled into research, actually. I never planned to do that. And there I found the law of, of creativity, actually. And I tried to understand better what is this ability all about, what hinders us to be creative in an individual, in teams, but also in organizations. And now, like one and a half years back in time, I started at Siemens with the only job. Toby, take care of our creativity in Siemens. So that's it. We are on a creative journey ourselves right now. And I try 
to share with you today two little stories that hopefully illustrate what often hinders us to be creative, what makes us stumble over creativity, but also I would like to share two little insights, what we at Siemens do to become a little bit better in that field. But first of all, let's get the basics out of the way. Um, what is creativity? I think we could have like an hour-long uh, discussion on that, actually, and it's not easy to define it. In the end, what I always try to picture is the definition that way that I say it's, in the end, a human ability that enables us to create something new and useful. But very important, it's not a single individual uh, ability that is easily to, to explain. It's basically a set of different abilities, skills, and behaviors that all have to come into place in order to be really successful creative. So it's very complex, and I will not dive deeper into that now, but just as a baseline, that is actually what I try to talk about, the human ability of creativity. And why is it important? And that's what I always show to our management. Right? It's like already back in time, a study by World Economic Forum where they ask very smart people all around the, wo the world, and they ask what is or, the, or what are the most important skills for the future for people inside of organizations. And as you can see, in 2015, creativity was number 10, and it was projected for 2020 that it will be number three. Okay, now we're already in 2022, so it's already outdated. But I still love this slide, and I ask the management, what do you think? If we know that creativity is that much or that important for us, do we already address creativity as much as it probably deserves? And I will leave the answer to you. So I think we can do better there, and that's our creative journey at, at Siemens we will try to, to work on. So creativity is important, but we also, of course, have newer statistics by World Economic Forum, and this is like a little bit differently arranged, but you can still find creativity, originality, initiative in the middle, but you also have problem solving and ideation down there, and also innovation, or also complex problem sol solving, where always, I guess, creativity is needed. Well, why do we stumble? And I will share, as I said, two little stories with you today. Number one is about our brain. So. We, in order to be better in being creative, we need to understand how our brain works. So we humans are all pattern search engines, actually. So just imagine you're a kid, and we heard the e-bike story, and you learning, you're learning to ride a bike the first time, right? Can you imagine that? A long time ago. I guess it was hard, hard of, a, of an effort. A lot of cognitive load, right? Really, you have to concentrate. And it's a very complex pattern, actually, you have to learn. So a lot of different muscles have to come into place, right, in order to really be able to ride the bicycle. And it takes, I don't know, weeks, days, I don't remember how long it, uh, it took, but it's really a lot of effort, right? And this is the beauty, because once you learn this pattern, our brain saves this pattern, and the next time you sit on a bike, you don't need any cognitive effort. It just works. You just ride the bicycle. That's the beauty of the pattern thinking we have in our brains. And we need that pattern thinking all day long in every single situation in our life. But, and that's very important to understand, if it comes to creativity, I think it's obvious that we need to break out of those patterns, or we need to create new patterns, right? And we need to understand that, because, I mean, I love this um, comparison, right? So when we mirror that with our business life, Routine work is basically recalling learned patterns, right? Like riding a bicycle. It's easy, low cognitive load, not too much of effort we have to put in. But being creative, especially divergent work, right? And breaking out of those patterns is like learning to ride a bike. So a lot of high cognitive effort, actually. And if I would compare the one hour of routine work with one hour of creative work, I will definitely need more energy for one hour of creative work. And given the fact that we're all lazy people, we probably prefer the routine task over the creative one, right? So in order to showcase you and make it really experienceable for you today, I would like to invite Martin up on stage with our bicycle. So we all lined up with the e pike story into a bicycle story connected to creativity. And it's actually a special bike you all are not able to ride. So if you turn the handlebar to the left, the wheel turns right. And if you turn the handlebar to the right, the wheel turns left as you can see, hopefully, right? And <laughs> give him a big applause, I guess, for Martin this time, please. <laughs> he will. It's world premiere for him. It's the first time he tries to ride this bicycle on stage, so please go for it, Martin. <laughs> So 
So you can see it's really hard work. You want to try another one? Another time? One more time. <laughs> okay. I think that's enough to showcase you how hard it is, it is to break out of our pattern. He learned to ride a bicycle, of course, right? But this one is not possible. You can actually try that later on. We will have the bike outside, and you can try it at your own risk, right? So be careful. But there's a very famous YouTube video about a guy who built this, uh, this bicycle and tried it out. And it took him, I guess, eight months to really learn to ride this new bicycle, the new way of steering. And then he went to Amsterdam and wanted to ride a, new bi uh, a normal bicycle and he was no longer able to ride the normal bicycle. So what we learn here is that our brain is not able to switch between those different patterns easily. And this is actually, actually exactly what happens in our business life all the time. We have to switch between patterns. Actually, we are better when we are younger. We lose this ability of switching between patterns when we get older, but we can train that and we can kind of become better. And if we mirror that again with our business life, that's what our CEO, Rainer Brehm from Factory Automation always says, we converge too early. And that's actually the reason, or the reason for that is actually the, this pattern thinking thing, so that we are really have a hard time in divergent thinking. So if you think about creativity, you usually have those two different phases. You have divergent work, right? Breaking out of patterns, looking for different solutions, a lot of different ideas, right? being open-minded, and then you have to converge again. Of course, select the best ideas, and boil it down, execute on that, and build on that, right? And what we see is that we have a tendency to converge because of the reason or I just showed to you with this pattern thinking. So it's hard for us to break out. And of course, we are faster, right? But we still leave, as I showcased here, a lot of unused potential there. And especially if we want to be disruptive or more sustainable, I would say it's worthwhile spending more time on the divergent work. Of course, there are some reasons and situations in life and also in business life and challenges where it's good way to really converge fast, right? But sometimes it's important to diverge. And what do we do at Siemens? It's hard to explain that in, in, in a few words, but I try. What we do there is we, we're not able to provide any process standards or anything that is easy to apply, like a list. Those are the 10 steps you have to follow, and that's it, right? What we do is we work closely with teams and define and design together rituals, which is basically a build set of different creativity techniques, approaches, what do you do, so filled with a lot of knowledge out of creativity, and also that they know in which situations they apply that, which people join there. It, this one is just an example of like 30 minutes, for example. Right? So the aim is that we equip our teams with a library of different rituals. They, can, they have basically ready-made, and they just take it out and apply it the moment they need it. And this decision, when to apply, in which situation they have to do on them, uh, um, themselves. So that's not what I can tell them. I can just equip them with techniques, knowledge about creativity. So this is one little baby step towards more divergent work. We kind of try to enable our people, teams, and the whole organization. And now we're coming, still concerning the divergent work, we're coming from a COVID time. We all were used to sit in front of computers, right? And one big question was always up in my mind. Is this really helpful for creativity, or is it really hindering our creative work? And we have, I guess, I don't know if you can think of that, but I have a lot of discussions with, with colleagues at Siemens, and we always have this discussion, oh, does it help me to be more creative, or does it hinder me? There was actually just recently a very nice research study um, published in the Nature magazine, I guess two weeks ago, I guess, br uh, brand new. And what they found out was basically that for divergent work, actually, it's way better in, uh, if you work in person compared to virtual uh, work. If it comes to convergent work, both is even, like you can do both. There's a slight tendency that actually virtual work can help a little bit and be even better than, than in person, but it's not like significant. Anyway, so I think that's a very important learning. So if you really wanna be creative post COVID, I would recommend do it in person if it comes to ideation, divergent work. And they also looked into like, how big has the group to be. Right? An ideal for divergent idea generation, they said, best is in-person pairs. So only two people. Next one is in-person groups. Worst is virtual pairs. And the worst you can do is work in virtual groups for divergent work. What I think is a very nice learning and easily to apply for the future. Well, that's my story number one. 
concerning the challenge of divergent work and related to how our brain works, this pattern thinking. Number two is about our actually subconscious brain, that we still think in organizations very often that we have like a light switch. We can turn, and, turn on and off our creativity as we want, but that's not true. And in order to understand how our creativity works better, I always like to start with this little chart. It's also a little statistics. And it's, it's, the question behind that is where are ideas born? So in which situations basically do your ideas pop up in your mind? And as you can see, it's bathroom, it's shower, it's um, while running, it's while going for a walk, it's sports, it's riding a bicycle, and it's only 6% at the workplace. But the question is, what do we learn out of that? And if you look at those little situations, we can find one thing that all have in common, and that is actually the moment that all those situations, you are not having a high cognitive load, so your brain is basically turned off mostly, right? Even the 6% at the workplace, you're procrastinating. So it's a low cognitive load, and neuroscientists did MRI scans, and first of all, they thought that when you're not thinking, there's nothing happening up there, so you're, it's turned off, but that's not true. Uh, Roger Beatty, Beatty from Penn State University, among others, they did those, those MRI scans and also in creativity research, and they, they found out and they coined it the so-called default mode network. So when you're reducing your cognitive load in those situations, your default mode network gets activated, and there's happening a, a lot, actually. The only thing is it's happening in your subconsciousness. You're not noticing it. That's very important. And the default mode network is very important for creativity, obviously, because it's not working like that, that you think today about a problem and you right away come up with a solution. But you think about it, you put it on the side, you activate your default mode network, while those situations, right, and you let actually your subconsciousness, your default mode network, work for you. Because during that time, your subconsciousness connects thoughts while, um, out of your past, whatever is up in your mind with, with the problem, description, all that, and this increases the probability that a new thought, a new idea might pop up in your consciousness. The only thing what you need to do is do that on a regular basis. And I think that's beautiful. I mean, the subconsciousness, like the default mode network, is doing our work. We can relax, right? The only thing what we need to do is to really work consciously on that problem on a regular basis. So it's not working that, um, I'm sorry, it's not working that we only have like a light switch here and we have this one month uh, and we focus on a brainstorming session, which is three hours long, and I don't do anything before that. I mean, you're definitely creative in that session, and by, by like connecting different thoughts in the group, of course, but you can be even better when you consider what we just learned. And we call it the thinking out loud principle at Siemens, so it's not working out loud, it's thinking out loud, and it's easy, as easy as that that we just use a Teams channel, basically, and we incorporate a challenge there, different rules, we get the group together in, and we start that at least two or three weeks before we have this three-hour creativity session. And their task is then to really work on that challenge consciously at least half an hour a day. No matter when, where, they can do it wherever they are, whenever they want. The only thing is they should do that in order to really activate the default mode network during that time as a preparation, basically, to the three-hour creativity session. And then, mainly, you can focus on convergent work in the three-hour creativity session. Well, that's it, basically. I shared two important stories or learnings I made the last couple of years. So first of all, be aware of your pattern search engine right, in your brain and find ways and be aware of like, this value of divergent work. Right? You can apply rituals and think like, things like that, but also be aware of the thing that your subconsciousness does a lot of work for you, and actually a lot of creative work. And I think we should leverage on that. Very often, I think we have this arrogance that we think, hey, that's the way I work today. Your brain has to follow the way I do my work. And I would like to, sh to change that perspective into, let's understand better how our brain works and our creativity works, and then try to find ways or environments, or like the Teams channel, the thinking out loud principle, to leverage on that knowledge, because we we're not able to change how our brain works. So, thank you very much.